Hey guys, it's Andy and Wes here from D6 Evolution, and today we're going to be talking about the shooting phase. All right, take it away, Wes. Man, I love the shooting phase. Yeah. Uh, it's a great chance to like throw those dice and be far enough away that actually your opponent can do nothing back to you, uh, rather than taking chances up in the combat phase. It's uh, it's good fun. Right. So, what do you think is the most important thing to go through first of all? Uh, I think target priority is probably one of the key things for me, and just making sure that you, you've allocated and thought about what enemy units you want to get rid of that turn. Uh, think about what enemy units are going to pose the biggest threat to you and making sure you annihilate them from range. Really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the way I think about target priority is think about it at the start of the game. So when your opponent gives you your list, think about your target priority for the game and then each turn, dependent on the mission and the, sort of the state of the game, think you have to sort of reevaluate your target priority, don't you? Um, I think about the most important and then sort of have secondary targets or targets of opportunity if you do a little bit better than you think. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I like to think about which ones, are the, for me, maneuverability to keep, to keep those units down or ones with lots of firepower when I get yeah. there. So, and then it comes to thinking, like saying, so think of how much firepower you need to put into that unit to get rid of it. Yeah, absolutely. And in your movement phase, this is where you set yourself up for your shooting phase and so making sure you're, you're in range of one or two targets potentially and you know, by shooting other units, you're not suddenly going to find yourself out of range. Yeah. Yeah, so having those sort of switch fire units ready to go. So you yeah. have your primary target and then having the second target that you can switch fire onto, or even a tertiary one that you can get onto if, if all, all goes really well that phase. Yeah. But equally, having other units lined up to, if your first unit doesn't take out the, the target that you want, mm -hmm. having other units going to fire into that as well. Yeah, which, which probably brings us on to... Um, Talking a little bit about how much firepower do you actually have to put into a unit? Yeah, it's a pretty good thing to talk about. Yeah. Um, and you, you don't have to get too geeky with this, basically. You just have to, when you're building a list, have a rough idea about what your what like your last cannon devastators would do against a rhino, for example. So on average, you know how many shots you need to put into it so that you're not suddenly going to put two, two last cannons into a rhino and think, think it's going to work. It may work. You can always hope. And it does occasionally work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Double six every time. <laughs> so, we worked this out beforehand, but how many last cameras do you need to kill a rhino? Eight is the magic number. I'm surprised you remember. <laughs> I know. Goldfish brain. Yeah. You actually guessed it, didn't you? I, I, I didn't guess. I just knew. Yeah. I know that stuff. Uh, okay, for double points, how many Reapers would you need to kill Hive Tyrant? Oh, 12. I think it was 16. All oh, right, it was 16. So it's, it's a lot more than you yeah. think some of these things. Um, so it's just good to have, and that's only on average. So you, you may fluff it. You, you, your, your dice may betray you at that key moment. So just having those extra units, you know, which are also in range to kill your sort of primary target is key. Yeah, and it's yeah. Good. You, you can do a lot of that beforehand as well. There's, there's lots of apps out there and websites you can go with statistical yeah. things. So, you can do that or actually just by playing games where you kind of get a feel for what your army can do as well. So yeah. the more you play, the more you look into it, the, the easier it becomes to yeah. figure out how much firepower you really need to take a unit yeah. down. Yeah, the only thing I'd say is when I looked into it, it was actually a lot more than I thought. Mm. But I thought by sort of three or four last cameras would easily kill a rhino, but... There are ways that you can yeah, improve you each chance actually, Yeah, you've got re-rolls, you've got from characters, from command points and so forth, <clears> which also help, but... Yeah, just, just having a base understanding of roughly what you need to do certain things is a good idea. So it probably brings us on to talking about ways you can improve it and things to think about as well. So having those re-rolls of the ones of your, your buff characters like captains, etc. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's mitigating chance really, isn't yeah. it? Um, so you, you've obviously got all your buffs from characters, but it's also not doing silly things like leaving yourself, you know, say Alpha Legion, you know, when you're outside 12 inches, you're minus one to hit. So in your movement phase, being just over 12 inches away, it's always a little bit embarrassing. So we're trying to remove as much chance as you possibly can from, from the shooting phase. I love it when you need your things outside the dark uh, shroud range. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you know, and there's, there's certain things which give armies buff, like for the Dark Angels, you dark shroud, everything within six is minus one to hit. So, con so that goes back to target priority, concentrating on killing the things which make the other things harder to hit. And then from the flip side, if the person who's attacking is so making sure you make the most of your, your weapons as well. So weapon to target matching is, is a key part of the game as well. So uh, use your high, fat, high power uh, shots to kill bigger targets and your multi shot uh, to kill screening used in essentially is probably yeah, yeah, absolutely. a good uh, rough guide with that. Yeah. Uh, making sure like melter ranges, you're inside the half range of that to make sure you get the 
2d6 pick the highest mm -hmm. one's always key as well so, to get that. Yeah. so I think the next thing to talk about is are you do you do overkill or do you sort of spread your shots around um, trying to kill more things at once what, what's your thoughts on that? so I, I, I personally run fast armies to maximise and concentrate my firepower to take out a unit so like overkill it so that it's yeah. definitely there's dead. no sort of kill like overkill no absolutely <laughs> so, so I, I, I decide pretty much which turn I so use the manoeuvrous approach to get my army in one place and I attack what I need to and then switch fire afterwards to, to target opportunity afterwards yeah. having sort of like a priority list in my head as to what I want to kill yeah and it, it tends to be one of the mistakes I see sort of more beginner players but, uh, do is trying to kill like four or five different things at once and failing to kill any of them properly and again, it comes back to, to sort of chance and actually, is it more beneficial to kill this one flyer here or is it more beneficial to sort of partially wound two things? And generally, when your opponent's shooting back, having two slightly wounded things, they're, they're going to do a lot more damage than if you'd actually just focused and killed one. Yeah, and there's, there are some armies that, that like Necrons are really punish you if you don't wipe out the unit. To oh god, yeah, they, they just, they all the, get back they up. They guys can get back up again, it's really, it's really, really annoying. And Necrons in particular, you have to play slightly differently, you have to just overkill. Absolutely. There, there is no point of trying to partially wound a unit, and yeah, you've got, you've got to play that slightly different again. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you have to actually take that chance and try and kill multiple things at once. So if you're down in the game and you do just genuinely have to kill three or four units in the turn, it's a little bit risky, but recognising when you have to do that and when you can play it safe and just kill one and two units. Well, absolutely, it's a game of chance after all. And sometimes that, that lucky fluke shot where you get the hits, you get the wound, and you get six wounds that go off on yeah, the card yeah. and kill the target. Mm. Man, is great. And that's... But, but it's recognising when in the game you have to take chances and when you don't have to take chances, and that... And that sort of affects your sort of target priority. Right, so guys, that's that's all we can think about for the shooting phase. Um, so come back and we're going to be, what are we talking about next? Well, hopefully we're getting a game with my darker. Oh yeah, yeah these, these, these are the, it's going to be Dark Eldar versus Custodes, hopefully, by um, next couple of weeks. Hopefully see you then. Yeah.